head and I took the, uh, the roof off, as that was easy. The side panels, now of course one side panel was massively bent, so we didn't have to be as gentle with it, but it came off okay. The opposite side panel was in good condition, trying to keep that. But that hopefully is serviceable. I may even put the windows from those side panels back into the replacement. Uh, but then of course we got on to the rear top. Now, <laughs> the back was easy. It's just a series of bolts that you can actually see. They're difficult to get to, so we just uh, took a grinder to them and they're off now. But at the other extreme, the ones at the front are, are on occasion very difficult to see and somewhat concealed. And there was an additional layer of mastic which joined the rear of the seat box to the front of the tub. And I have to say that, uh, uh, God bless her, but the tub was a big... <laughs> Neither of us like doing it, as uh, I've never done it before, but I imagine that if all the nuts and bolts were A, accessible, B, the same, and C, not fused, through the judicious use of grinders, um, hammers, drifts, cold chisels, and spanners, and uh, <laughs> we did manage to get it off. There's a bracket that has four Allen keys. <laughs> Okay, why? Anyway, so um, there were several occasions when we thought we'd got the tub free and it wasn't even remotely free. But this mastic just glued everything together as a result of which it was, it was just awful to get apart. Yeah, that's the, the Rover V8 has just passed its MOT. In here, look, there's all this what amounts to tree sap going on in here. So although that's kept the vehicle warm and dry in the previous years, it's going to be, how would you describe that, Ed? To get out. A bit or a bump. Pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. Yes, yes, yes. I could occur entirely. So, uh, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Oh, you were talking to yourself. <laughs> And good news, because all the hits were above the chassis, they were just bodywork, so we had a quick measuring device put on it. Uh, the chassis is square. There are a couple of rust holes, but that's to be expected. The bit that did disappoint me, though, is that bits of the footwell were held together with fiberglass. So once the fiberglass came off, then <laughs> it was just carpet underneath. Not really what you want to see. You had a big accident like that. And it looks as though the whole rear cross member was actually welded on some time ago. So that's a replacement. Getting into the, you're all right, Dave, don't worry about it. You don't have to go around, mate. You, you're, you're part of the flick as well. We can edit you out anyhow. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. So when we got into the back of the top, the electrics are a right old bodge job. So bits and pieces everywhere that have been cut and re-spliced and a right old rat's mess. What is a rat's mess? I've no idea. I meant to say maze or nest, and it came out as mess. That's good. Now, I mean two minds. I was speaking to my friend Tony the other day. What do you reckon, Dave? I'm, I've got a mate, Tony, who's a sparky. Yeah. And um, I'm going to ask him to come down and help anyway, so yeah. just because he wants to, yeah. nothing else. But what do you reckon to a new loom? Uh. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm. By the way, unwitting sponsors, or unwilling sponsors in many ways, for this particular project would be DeWalt, Miller and Hook de Force, Barco and Dirty Rigger. You heard it here first. On the subject of which, let's get our Uvex goggles on. I'm just a monkey with a spanner, but if I can do this, you can do that.